Hello students, this is Ashani from Chinta.com. Today we will talk about advanced mathematics that is beyond the school level. But many high school students who are interested in mathematical sciences, they take these courses even in high school. If you are in college or university, these will be useful for you. I'll tell you about the sequence in which you take these courses so that you can do this most efficiently. What is the goal? The goal is to learn enough mathematics to enjoy the subject and also to go into research or industry related careers in the domain of mathematics. Okay, so let's get started. What is the first thing that you should be learning? The first thing in my understanding should always be abstract algebra. Now many universities offer linear algebra as the first course. Uh, that can be a little bit tricky because linear transformations, they form a group, which is a topic of abstract algebra. So in a sense, the notion of groups, rings and fields are more fundamental than, uh, let's say, something like linear algebra. And you will appreciate it more, the linear algebra uh, topics in linear, in linear algebra, if you learn to see them through the lens of group theory. Moreover, if you're into cryptography or if you're into uh, data mining and stuff like that, you can uh, learn a lot of uh, applications of field theory into these domains. So, in short, start with a really decent background in abstract algebra which is group strings and fields now i'll suggest one book and personally i'm a fan of books which are easy which are understandable and which has problems that are not too hard because otherwise i'll get a little bit okay this is too hard i guess so let's talk about an easy book it's called contemporary abstract algebra by galleon I, I've really enjoyed the book. The chapters are really small. They are very approachable. So you should start with that. First course, always abstract algebra. Okay. The next layer is real analysis. Okay. So you might say, should I not go into linear algebra before I go into real analysis? You could. You could do that. But I would space this algebra topic a little bit with analysis just to make sure we are understanding what's going on and not get drowned with a bunch of algebra. So real analysis is really interesting and they, it is sort of the fundamental of vector calculus or multi, multivariable calculus that, that you will do later and it will get you to the very bottom of how completeness axiom works, how sequences of numbers work, and what is the real definition of limit continuity and so other and the other fundamental topics in this domain. A really nice introduction to linear analysis, real analysis is uh, given by Bertel Schubert, Introduction to Real Analysis. It's a great book. You can additionally read Topology of Matrix Spaces by Kumersan. It's a very interesting book. It, it is about a little bit of topology, but it is very connected with real, real analysis. It has a lot of great problems. It's a problem-driven book, which is what I like about it. So these are the first two courses, really, abstract algebra and real analysis. The next step is, of course, linear algebra. Now, at this point, you are, you are able to see linear transformations through a different eye. You are able to see the notion of vector spaces through a different eye. You are able to think about determinant as a function which is taking the matrices as an input and producing a number as an output. You are now able to appreciate the fact that matrices are not matrices. Matrices are representation of a certain type of functions. This is a very important insight. Many linear algebra uh, books or courses start with a bunch of computations with matrices. I personally think that that is not very interesting. 
what is more exciting if you go into the hidden layer of what's going on you will probably enjoy the topic a little bit more so what book for linear algebra well there are two books that i will start is uh, recommend one is linear algebra done right by axler it's a very nice book and the second one is artin's algebra artin has a book on algebra there is a chapter so a few chapters on linear algebra you should you can do that uh, a very well recommended book is gilbert strang's introduction to linear algebra it's a very nice book but i personally think that uh, axler and artin is the way to go it's it's shorter in a way and you will be able to do a lot of more problems and stuff like that and you'll also be able to understand a lot of fundamentals better if you go through axler so that's the third thing the fourth thing is multivariable calculus now you are in a very good position you have learned enough analysis to understand what is a derivative you are able to think of tangent spaces because you can understand derivatives you can also think of tangent spaces because you understand linear algebra because you can think of a derivative as a linear approximation of a very complicated looking function it's a very important insight and uh, there is a very interesting website i think by university of minnesota where they have this beautiful uh, sort of um little toy games or models which can which really which are really helpful to gain insight into multivariable calculus so i will recommend that website i'll put a link of that in the description as well but otherwise uh you can use the book of spivak linear uh, for multivariable calculus so these are the really four things abstract algebra real analysis Uh, linear algebra and multivariable calculus which is all what you need to get a real good start in the world of mathematical science now if you want to go toward machine learning if you want to go toward artificial intelligence if you want to go toward statistical analysis all of these topics will then open up for you and then you can really do well one thing i will just end the video with one simple note that while you were doing all of this try to get your hands into computational tools like sage math these are very useful to generate patterns one of the philosophies that we follow at chinta is to learn by experiment so for example if you are learning kali graph uh, in abstract algebra you can draw the kali graph by hand using the group presentation and then you can go to sage math and then draw the kali graph using the presentation uh, using the tool software tools it's it's very interesting and it is also very instructive so i would strongly suggest that while you you know do all of these books try all these pa- problems on pen and paper go ahead and use sage math to do the computational aspects of it okay uh, i hope you will learn something really well thank you for watching this video let me know if you have any comments or questions Take care. Bye.